Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Happy birthday, Red Sea Reefer. Happy birthday to you. Hello and welcome back everyone to Amr Azul TV. Uh, the tank is now three years old. Can you believe it? Uh, it's, uh, it's actually been an amazing journey. Uh, so I've been kind of celebrating uh, the last couple of days uh, for, uh, for several reasons. Uh, if, you're, uh, <laughs> if you can stick around to the end of the video, you'll uh, realize why I'm a little bit extra happy uh, this video. Uh, but uh, let's get starting. So uh, I'm just gonna show you like uh, random shots of my tank and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my system and what I've been doing for the last three years and uh, I'm gonna uh, do a little uh, top-down tour actually like a, a decent sized top-down tour uh, showing you all my frags well colonies now. All right so uh, it's a tank is a Red Sea Reefer uh, 250 set uh, three years ago in the middle of June. Uh, well that would have been 2016. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'm gonna go through kind of the major equipment, uh, but I'm I, I'm gonna leave a link upstairs for a video that I just published, uh, showing uh, my light and my flow, uh, but also kind of a breakdown of all the equipment that I'm running in the tank. But very briefly, um, the tank uh, has uh, radion light uh, right, uh, lighting, uh, three Ecotec radions XR15s, uh, generation twos. Uh, they're running the SBS AB Plus program. Uh, par is around uh, 350 in the top shelf and around uh, 100 to 150 on uh, sand bed. Uh, flow in the tank is provided by uh, two uh, MP10s, Ecotec MP10s, and two XF Geyers or Geary's. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to call them Geyers, guys. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but Geyer is what comes naturally to me. Uh, gyre, I think, is how you're meant to pronounce it. Anyway, Gyre, Gyre, Tomato, Tomato. Uh, all right, uh, uh, the flow inside the tank is about 63 times uh, per hour. So that's uh, 63 times 50 gallons per hour. Uh, in the sump, I have a Vectra return uh, uh, return pump. And I'm just kind of keeping it simple in the sump. Uh, essentially, there is a skimmer, uh, a fuge. Uh, I just run carbon. I do two-part dozing uh, using uh, uh, B-Ionic or Bionic uh, from ESV. Uh, and uh, I do dose uh, nitrates and phosphates. So the, the parameters that I like to keep in my tank is alkalinity anywhere between 8 to 9 uh, dKH, calcium 140, uh, sorry, uh, 1420 to 1450, magnesium, I like to keep it at uh, 1400 or 1420. Uh, phosphates, I like to keep them between 0.1 and 0.2, and if they actually go down below that, then I have to dose. Uh, I dose potassium uh, phosphates, uh, which is uh, from Seachem Flourish. Uh, nitrates, I uh, like to keep them between 5 and 10 parts per million, and if they fall below that, I dose uh, potassium nitrate. All right, uh, what else? So that's kind of the major chemistry. Uh, in terms of livestock, uh, I have, uh, I, have I, I would say, a healthy bio load. I have about uh, 10 fish in the tank, uh, two clownfish, a small yellow tank, five wrasses. I love my wrasses. I got a uh, 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 Moyer leopard wrasse, uh, a yellowtail tamarind wrasse, a uh, fairy wrasse, a pintail fairy wrasse, uh, a flasher, two flasher wrasses, uh, a, a carpenter flasher wrasse, and an eight line wrasse. I got a royal uh, grandma, and I have a, a tiny, tiny neon kobe. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, COC, the cleanup crew, I, I have uh, an army of uh, the black-footed snails. I think they're called trochus snails. I also have two uh, tuxedo urchins, blue tuxedo urchins, which I think are fabulous. Uh, I had several, uh, several uh, starfish, but I removed them recently because uh, uh, they were getting a little bit, bit too big for the tank. 
Uh, and I have a whole bunch of snails that live in the sand. I, I think they're called Nasaris or Nasarius snails. I, I can't remember what's the exact pronunciation, but they kind of bore in the sand. I don't really see them and they come up. I have uh, one emerald crab, uh, which uh, hides most of the time, but I do occasionally see it at night. And I recently added uh, an acro crab, so it's it's living in one of uh, in my blueberry acro. I also don't see it. The camouflage is really well. Uh, so uh, that's it in terms of kind of the cleanup crew. Uh, I do like to uh, kind of run with uh, that, that my I guess if if you ask me what my reefing philosophy is uh, right now, it's the dirty dirty. <laughs> uh, so I've. Uh, I've been uh, I've been just essentially letting the tank kind of build up in nutrients. Uh, I I haven't you know nitrates and phosphates don't go too crazy high. I do have a fuge and that I think helps with uh, with removing uh, or kind of keeping the nitrates in check. So if if anything, uh, I find that as the tank is maturing, I am uh, I'm having to kind of add more nitrates and phosphates to kind of maintain the the numbers that I that I want. I actually don't have any mechanical filtration, so I, I was running filter socks uh, up until I think about uh, year two of the tank, but I just didn't like having to clean them and, and uh, you know, it, 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 it's not a big deal, but it's also, you know, it, it does take a little bit of time. So I've been running, I think, for the past year with no mechanical filtration and the sump has been kind of getting dirty, but yeah, and I, I do see a lot of detritus accumulating, but it doesn't kind of affect the parameters in, in a way that you would expect. So I don't get like a big spike in, in nitrates as the detritus builds up in my tank. Uh, I, I don't know why I do. I do have like a very healthy population of uh, sponges and uh, and tube worms and, and, and that sort of thing. So perhaps they, they kind of consume the nitrates. Uh, I think the corals and uh, also take up nitrates and phosphates, uh, but I'm, I'm not seeing any kind of issues with uh, with nutrients with running no mechanical fil filtration. So the, the only real filtration is the, obviously the biological filter, uh, all of the organisms and the corals in the tank that consume nitrates. I do have uh, maybe like one liter of Ciparax in the sump, and I have my uh, Bubble King skimmer, which uh, which gives me kind of a nice uh, dry skim uh, most of the time. The tank has been kind of fairly stable uh, for the past uh, year and a half. I, I kind of tinkered a lot in the first year and a half, but uh, after I had my epic battle with Dinos and uh, I, I won that battle, I've kind of kept things simple and, and that's why I kind of been maintaining uh, high levels of, of nutrients just to kind of promote biodiversity. Uh, there's been uh, m really most of the changes that has that have happened over the past uh, year has been to kind of help me with automation. Uh, running a tank involves uh, a lot of time, and and if you want to keep the tank for the long term, then you know that the time uh, involved in refilling your RODI or or uh, reservoir or uh, or doing water changes does kind of add up. Uh, so two positive things that I've done in my tank is I've. Uh, removed my our reservoir and pump into the basement uh, and so there's a, a link to a video on, on how I accomplished this and that's been kind of great I, I essentially have uh, at any one point of time I have enough water RO uh, water for about a month and a month and a half and I just uh, turn on a tap to uh, to fill it up and uh, I just installed an automatic water changing system using the dose uh, the Neptune dose and uh, 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 again mounted in the basement and and that's been a, a great improvement i'm still waiting on my trident so uh, uh I'll, uh i'm really looking forward to uh to get that unit and see if i could automate testing so uh that's it about kind of the major uh kind of systems and, and how i run my tank i'm gonna uh switch into my uh, top down tour and tell you a little bit about my frags all right, time for the top-down tour. Uh, this is my favorite view of the tank, and remember, everything in here was uh, started as a one-inch frag, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. All right, we'll start here with uh, my uh, tenuous. It's just like a generic uh, turquoise tenuous, and it, it's got a really lovely color, but uh, it's also uh, it's got a very nice shape. So looking from the front of the tank, it, it looks pretty awesome. It's always got polyps out. You know, this was a very inexpensive frag, but uh, you don't you don't have to have like crazy expensive frags to have like nice colonies. And this is an example of like a ten dollar frag that is looking pretty awesome and gives a lot of kind of structure to the colony. 
Uh, here is my aura birds of paradise again i had to kind of cut this down because the colony got super big and we started to get overgrown by algae in the bottom uh, my christmas montipora uh, really awesome montipora that i kind of keep fragging this is why you see kind of big chunks of the colony missing I, I, i'm always on top of this colony because i don't want it to take over and then on the top shelf, uh, here's now I think probably my second biggest colony, the Blueberry Wine Acro. Uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic colors, just like electric blue. It's, it's really hard to capture, but I mean, it looks better than what you see here. Uh, really, really awesome, uh, uh, really awesome colors. I'm just trying to kind of shade the LED puck here, but uh, we're just going to live with it. Uh, and beside it is my aura birds uh, sorry aura red planet and so my red planet is a little bit more green than red because it's not getting a lot of light in that spot but you can see it's still growing and finally i'm starting to see kind of branching uh but you know it, definitely the blueberry wine has grown a lot more uh here we have a, a small little frag uh of uh, pink uh, pink lemonade i think it's kind of encrusting it's growing a little bit well it, it cycles from looking really good to kind of looking uh, a little bit unhappy it looks a little bit unhappy here but i hope that it's going to come back and then probably my third biggest colony in the tank is my uh, pink cadillac uh, it, it's actually growing so much that i'm going to have to cut some of these branches that are growing to the back because it's shading the bonsai a little bit but uh it, you know it, it is a lovely colony with uh uh, uh Blue, uh, blue polyps, uh, green, uh, green, uh, well, base green and, and pink, pink branches. Uh, so uh, uh, very nice colony. It's growing. It actually grows really fast. Uh, beside it is the Cali blue tort, uh, and it's uh, it's starting to kind of develop secondary plan, uh, branches on top, and and it's uh, uh, I think it's going to fill up pretty soon. And then you see behind here the bonsai, the poor little bonsai, it's kind of getting shaded by the pink Cadillac. So I, I think I'm going to have to remove that big branch of the pink Cadillac just to get uh, get uh, the bonsai a little bit more light. But it's a, the bonsai is a beautiful colony. Again, not very expensive, but adds a lot of color. All right, we're going to look from the middle of the tank out. And uh, again, just look at this, right? It's like, it's really awesome, right? Like, the amount of growth that you get over over a period of time like two or three years it's uh the colonies do get big and so on the bottom is, is uh, again one of my largest uh, acroporas is the pac-man and like it's living on the sand bed getting about 100 par but it's doing great down there i mean i think i, I will have better colors if i moved it moved it up but it's uh, it's definitely really pretty here is uh, a shockaholic. This this thing was kind of fluorescent green, like super bright green when I got it. It was a wild colony. It's uh, you know the color the colors are not great, but I I, I think that I think it will come back. I, I see a little bit more fluorescence. Uh, the orange passion, one of my favorite colonies. My macro fragging is kind of working. It's a slow grower, but uh, the colors are just fantastic. Uh, yeah, just, just, I mean, this, when people show pictures of Walt Disney, I, I think it looks like the Orange Passion. I, I, I can't really tell uh, what's so special about the Walt Disney, but the Orange Passion is amazing. This is Refraft Marvin the Martian. Uh, super green polyps, uh, purple tips, grow, grows really fast for me so far, so I'm, I'm happy with this colony. Here's another angle of uh, the bonsai with the purple uh, uh, white flesh, purple tips, and green polyps. Uh, this tiny green thing is uh, refraft orange loom. I have another one, but this is an experiment to see how it does in really high light. Uh, this is the refraft red dragon, looking really nice. Uh, it, it looks pink here, but it's a little bit more red in person. And this is Acropora aculis, and and it's it's really got this cool minty green, uh, fluoresces a lot. Uh, I, I think it's going to look great once it gets a little bit bigger. It is encrusting. I just added this frag, I think, a couple of uh, months ago. And then we're going to look at uh, this new rock with some new frags. Uh, well, not new frags, newish frags. Uh, this is Major Laser. It's encrusting really well, considering that it's, again, um, pretty much on the sand bed, getting like about 100, 120 par. This is Jason Fox TNT Anacropora. A really interesting color, really interesting patterns. I'm happy I got this frag. It's encrusting really well. And this is the Flame Fox, which uh, I had it up top. It got really pale. It lost all of the fluorescent tips. And here on the bottom, it's recovering slowly and the color is coming back. So you see the neon uh, 
uh, neon tips coming back. So I'm, I'm happy with how this coral is kind of recovering in, in the bottom low light. Here is my second colony of uh, refract uh, 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 orange loom or rainbow loom. Uh, it, uh, it's supposed to have uh, pink tips, but this colony doesn't have it. I don't think it's, I think maybe it's got low light. Behind it is kind of a, a slimer. I think I'm going to have to find a better spot for it. And then here's my frustrating uh, electric Mayaji tour. So you can see the major colony looks really drab, but the small little frag that's on the bottom is, it, it's, that's what my entire colony looked like. So I've, I've made the decision to essentially take my big Mayaji tort colony and just kind of remove it and give the small frag some space. Sorry, Mayaji tort colony, but you gotta go. And this is an orange room colony that I'm rescuing for a friend. When it came, when I got it, it was totally brown, but now it's kind of uh, bright, uh, sorry, uh, orange rainbow loom. And now it's uh, bright fluorescent green and it's starting to show the blue purple tips. So uh, that's kind of the collection. I, I am adding, uh, I am planning to add a few more uh, SPS frags, uh, but uh, I'm gonna go on vacation soon. I'm gonna wait to add them once uh, I return. Uh, but uh, do do uh, check out my three year uh, time lapse pictures because I think you're, it's, it's nice to see these colonies now, but it's also really awesome to see the progression of how fast they grow and which Acroporas grew the most over uh, the three year period. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging around. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the channel. We uh, we hit the channel hit several miles milestones this year. Uh, the one K subscriber, and uh, now we're uh, we're up to I think three thousand. So uh, uh, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, I, I will continue updating. I, I'm planning to keep the tank for as long as I can. And uh, if you've stayed this far, uh, check out the Easter egg that's coming up next. I recommend uh, turning down the volume on, <laughs> on your uh, speakers a little bit. It's, uh, it's some candid pictures that uh, my son took of us while watching a recent basketball game. Uh, all right, check it out. Thank you so much and see you around.